with nine months to go almost to the day that the world got its first look at the explosive evidence lawyers for Dominion voting systems unearthed while deposing Fox News anchors and executives and staff. Nine months is a long time, so you are forgiven if you do not remember all the bonkers things the Dominion deposition unearthed. But if you do remember anything, we're betting it's what Rupert Murdoch had to say about the colors red, blue, and green. This is what Rupert Murdoch had to say about the pillow guy and Trump ally Mike Lindell in his deposition, according to Dominion, quote, the man is on every night, pays us a lot of money. At first you think it's comic, and then you get bored and irritated. Rupert confirmed that he could tell FNN, Fox News Network, to stop running Lindell's advertisements, quote, but I'm not about to. And when asked why Fox continues to give a platform to Lindell, who continues to this day to spout lies about Dominion, Murdoch agreed that, quote, it is not red or blue, it is green. It's not red or blue, it's green. Essentially admitting it was about money and not necessarily truth. That unforgettable moment from Murdoch's deposition turned up the heat on Fox. And we know how that story ended, right? At the very, very, very last second. Fox agreed to an historic $787.5 million settlement. Well, now it is deja vu for Rupert Murdoch. Today and yesterday, he was reportedly deposed in yet another billion-dollar defamation suit against Fox. This time, a $2.7 billion defamation suit brought by Smartmatic. The voting technology firm is accusing Fox of launching a disinformation campaign against them and alleges that, quote, Fox and a handful of its hosts and guests knowingly lied or acted with reckless disregard for the truth by entertaining and endorsing the false claims that the company rigged the election for Biden over Trump. And while we don't know what Rupert Murdoch said under oath this time around, if passed as prologue, Murdoch's deposition could fuel a defamation battle worthy of a Dominion sequel. Joining our conversation, First Amendment scholar and senior visiting research fellow at Columbia University's Knight First Amendment Institute, Rennell Anderson-Jones, plus political and investigative reporter at the New York Times, Nick Confessori. Rick is also back with us. Nick, the Times, uh, they famously called the Dominion lawsuit, quote, the defamation fight of the century. Dominion initially was seeking $1.6 billion in damages, Smartmatic seeking $2.7 billion. So, so right out the gate, they are asking for even more money. Talk to me about how these cases compare. Well, it's almost the same case. In fact, you probably could have used the same script for your intro uh, <laughs> from the last case. As for this one, it's really kind of eerie the parallels. In both cases, uh, Fox is accused of, of uh, promoting and broadcasting lies about the election that it knew were untrue for the purpose of retaining their audience and making money. It's the same set of claims, and much as Murdoch was in some ways the star witness for Dominion, he could be the star witness for Smartmatic, for Dominion. What he said in deposition was, yeah, I knew that Biden won the election fair and square, and I was worried about the claims we were making on the air about the election. And that became uh, uh, you know, the sum and substance of the settlement. And of course, the Dominion case made the market for Smartmatic. It established that Fox would pay a certain price to keep Murdoch off a witness stand in a trial and settle the case. Renell, I want to refresh everyone's memory, including my own, of how Smartmatic intersects with Dominion here. This is from Brian Stelter's reporting in Politico. Quote, Giuliani went on Lou Dobbs' show on Thursday, November 12th, and brought up Dominion, also triggering the first of many smears about rival company Smartmatic on the network. All of its software is Smartmatic software, Rudy lied, so the votes actually go to Barcelona, Spain. Sidney Powell repeatedly made it sound like Dominion and Smartmatic were one and the same, and they were actually rival companies. One Fox executive was reduced to emailing Maria Bartiroma during her show, trying to get through to her. Dominion has nothing to do with, Smart, with Smartmatic. And again, what on earth are you talking about? The next day, the Fox executive appealed directly to the Fox News CEO, writing that this situation is crossing dangerous lines. So, Rennell, not only was Fox just, just getting it wrong, but you point out there's another important distinction that could be a huge advantage for Smartmatic, which is Smartmatic machines were only used in one county in the entire country. Why is that important? 
Well, it's important in part because of the narrative that is going on here. You're right that the Venn diagram, uh, if we were drawing it, of the overlap between the important pieces of evidence in each of these cases has a massive overlapping center. It's the same cast of characters, uh, both on the Fox side, uh, uh, Bartiromo and Dobbs and Perot, and also on the source side, Giuliani and Powell. Uh, but it is also the same basic narrative claim, which is that Fox made a conscious corporate decision to lean into these lies and conspiracies about the voting machine companies in order to woo back voters uh, and followers of Trump who had gravitated to other uh, more amenable uh, outlets in the right wing media ecosystem. The difference here, I guess, on the question of the size and comparison of the companies is that Dominion uh, had a role in a lot more outlets for voting in the 2020 election than Smartmatic had. Smartmatic argues uh, quite persuasively here that it had a very small and uncontroversial role in the 2020 election. It was essentially used in only one county that wasn't a county that was in any kind of dispute. And so the kind of David and Goliath narrative for Smartmatic is much stronger than it was for Dominion to the extent that uh, Dominion had to face Fox's uh, quite powerful arguments about news uh, Fox coming forward to say what we were really doing here was advancing a wider conversation about the stability and legitimacy of election technology that was important to an important election. Smartmatic can respond and say uh, that might have been true of Dominion, but it wasn't mm -hmm. true of us. We had such a small role in it that this was just a targeted attack that was designed to advance uh, the conspiracy theory rather than uh, related to anything newsworthy. Nick, help me understand something, which is uh, Smartmatic, they're going into their defamation suit with theoretically with the, bin, the benefit of Dominion having unearthed a, a mountain of damning evidence already. So, so how does it work? Are, are there limitations in terms of how much of Dominion's discovery Smartmatic can then use in this case? It's a great question. Look, there is so much in the public domain um, in the Dominion case. So putting aside what might remain under seal or, or kind of inaccessible, uh, the broad strokes that are necessary to at least begin the case that Fox knowingly told lies on the air are in newspapers like mine on websites around the world. Uh, these documents were made public eventually, and they tell a big part of the tale. I think the question for Smartmatic, the same one for Dominion, was really, can they really pin uh, Fox quite so closely to say that the people who made the decisions of what to air also knew at the time that what, what they were airing was recklessly wrong and maliciously wrong. That's kind of the, the question for the court um, and, and, and for a jury. But there is a ton of public evidence. Brian Stelter's book, you mentioned it earlier, um, he's gotten a bunch of stuff in his book. Uh, so there's plenty to work with is what I'm saying. When you talk about, as someone referenced, a Venn diagram, you, you and I were talking about the facts and the importance of the facts and the rule of law and the importance of facts, the media too. And you, you start to see how there are multiple institutions that are complicit, not just in the initial carrying in, of this lie, but the longevity of this lie. Yes. I mean, uh, it's like Jay Rosen says, the NYU professor, we need to talk about the stakes, not the odds. Mm -hmm. And which I agree with. Um, but I, I have to say, I'm going to be the skunk at the picnic in this discussion because Go on. Um, well, let's even stipulate that Fox did libel Smartmatic. But the issue that was strange about the Dominion case was if they were going to settle, why did they wait so long and settle with all of this revelations during the discovery process of those emails? If they're going to settle with Smartmatic, they're going to do it quickly because I don't see any benefit for Fox to continue this and to go to trial. We all wanted it to go to trial and have a libel case against Fox, but I just think they won't do that. And I'm surprised it's even gone on as long as it's gone on now. Rick, say